Well, hello and welcome to another video by Financial Learning. On today's video, I'm going to break down CleanSpark Inc.'s month to date mining numbers for the month of July. It's been a hot month so far, and CleanSpark has been hot in terms of their daily mining numbers. They are actually ahead of Mara. I'll get into that a little bit later on in the video, but I want to break down their average month to date mining number see exactly what I think they'll finish the month at, and then using last month's press release data, I'm gonna give you my best estimate as to what their profit margin may look like. And with all that said, let's get right into it. All right, and the first thing I wanna point out is going to be on the left-hand side, of course, this is CleanSpark's public wallet address information. You can see the hyperlink right under the CleanSpark name and logo. I'll actually put that in the description of this video. And then after that, you can see this is actually the table that I'm pulling all the data from. And then moving over into the first yellow column, moving down to the daily Bitcoin mining amount, you can see there that I do have bolded on June 3rd is what I'm highlighting. It's actually gonna be from their June 2nd day and there's the maximum amount of Bitcoin daily mined for the month of July so far is 23.9241, and the average amount mined so far in the month of July is 22.459. Now, total monthly mined so far is at 516.5560, and then I do have them with that June HODL based on the press release at 12,608, and I have them based on some other numbers I'll get to in a minute, at a Bitcoin selling amount of 264. That's gonna be based off of my calculated profit amount. And then based off of that, I do have them hodling so far month to date at 12,860. Now I do think that by the end of the month of July, based on that average daily mining amount, they will be at about 696 Bitcoin. So we'll have to see if they're able to ramp up and it really depends on the global hash as well as that level of difficulty rating. So we'll see if we get any breaks for CleanSpark in the next couple of days. We'll take a look at that in just a little bit. And then of course, I think there is some weather impact that is pushing higher energy rates. So I did go with a little bit of higher energy rate so far in the month of July. And again, I'll talk about that in just a minute. But before I do, let's take a look at their highest daily revenue amount. And you can see the highest daily Bitcoin revenue came in at $2,824,449. And that was on July 11th for the transaction, but it was actually from the July 10th mining amount. And then you can see the average price of Bitcoin in the month of July so far based off of these transactions is $114,219. Now I do think this number will change because CleanSpark does use a volume weighted average price when they do talk about that average price of Bitcoin. Now so far month to date revenue for CleanSpark is $59,207,039. And you can see their June HODL based on the current price of Bitcoin which is sitting at $117,821. They have a $1.4 billion in their HODL. And you can see based off of the additional Bitcoin that they would be putting, and this again is month to date, I do think their HODL is sitting right around $1.5 billion, $1 billion $1,515 million to be more precise. And then if you look at the projection, I do think that they'll get about $79,800,000 for the month of July in terms of revenue mined. Now this number could fluctuate a little bit and don't forget the company has been using a covered call strategy in order to be able to generate some additional premiums. The price of Bitcoin has been fluctuating between 120 and about 116,000 or so in the past few weeks. Now, of course, you can see that average Bitcoin price mined is only at 114,000. And that's because I think if you look back at the start of the month here in July, it was trading at about $107,000, $108,000. It didn't hit $110,000 until about July 10th. So again, I think they're having an excellent month so far, and I think we're gonna see some pretty juicy premiums for them. Now, I'm not sure how much information they'll share with us, but I do think we'll get a little sneak peek at the next earnings when it comes to this derivative strategy. Now, moving into that June mining amount, this again is based off of some of the press release information. I do have that shared down there under that production metric number. You can see they did produce a total of 685 Bitcoin in the month of June. 
And I do have the energy cost for the month of June coming in around $44,153. And the Bitcoin break even price I had for CleanSpark is $58,739. Now they did sell more Bitcoin than I think it was costing them to mine in terms of energy and their SGNA. So I think they may have been using some of that Bitcoin uh, revenue either in order to pay down some debt or potentially purchase additional capex and infrastructure so we'll have to wait and see if we get any additional updates we do know that they did get a 33rd mining site up and running and that was according to matthew schultz but looking at the rest of that you can see i do have their june profit margin around 43.93 percent and the june revenue of course this is coming from the press release if you multiply the total amount mined by that average amount and then you look at that delta on what they sold and you multiply that by the average price per bitcoin that they sold you can get a really good idea on that revenue i do have them clocked in at around 72 million four hundred sixty six thousand dollars and then you can see for the june profit amount i do have them profiting 31 million eight hundred thirty two thousand dollars and again this is assuming that they ended up selling some of that bitcoin even though they didn't need it in order to break even on the month now, before we move into how I'm calculating their energy usage so far in the month of July, I wanted to point out the global hash rate. You can see there that on July 16th, it was actually sitting at 1,029 exahash. So that is a one zeta hash. And you can see the average global hash has been sitting about 901. And in my opinion, that's why you're not seeing CleanSpark hitting that 25 daily Bitcoin amount like we were all hoping with this 50 exahash. Between that and the fact that it has been pretty hot here in the month of July and most other data centers are in Georgia, I do think that they may have been curtailing some of operations in order to be able to keep the margins healthier. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the global hash rate and then I'm gonna give you what I believe is the July Bitcoin mining cost and then what I think their profit margin could look like here so far in the month of July. All right, and the first thing I wanna point out on this slide is going to be the global hash rate. It's important because that's how I'm able to calculate what I think is the cost to mine in terms of energy for CleanSpark. But you can see here that they've been having some peaks and valleys somewhere between 800 exahash and 1.2 zeta hash or 1,200 exahash. And the average exahash is 901, and that's the daily average. I get the daily hash rate based off of the Y charts. And I'm using that in order to calculate this energy cost. So with the Bitcoin cost of mine calculator, plugging in 901 exahash, putting in 16.15, which is the efficiency that CleanSpark did disclose on the latest press release. And I went ahead and used six cents per kilowatt hour. I think that's reasonable considering July is one of the hottest months of the year. And I did some research in the state of Georgia and they do have peak pricing in the summer, specifically during the days in July. So I wanted to make sure that we accounted for that. I do think they're probably getting hit by this six cents per kilowatt. And I think that's why they've been curtailing some of their operations. I don't think they're fully throttled in on the 50 exahash they have installed. And again, that's just my opinion. We saw they did curtail a little bit last month and that's how they were able to get this nice 16.15 joules per terahash. So I think they may be doing about the same this month. I'd love to see them hit 23 Bitcoin mined a day to finish strong and maybe hit over 700 Bitcoin for the month of July, but we'll have to wait and see. But looking at all that, let's take a look. I do have the Bitcoin break even price coming in at $59,558 and the energy cost to mine the Bitcoin Again, using this calculator, I have it coming in at 45,207. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is gonna be the SGNA costs. If you can see here, month to date, I have all of those listed. So if you added all that together, that's how you get the Bitcoin break-even price. Take that Bitcoin break-even, multiply it by the number of Bitcoins so far mined by CleanSpark in the month of July, you're gonna get $30,765,000. That's the total month to date cost to mine Bitcoin with energy and SGNA. Now taking that amount and subtracting it from the total revenue that they've already generated so far here in the month of July, you're gonna get a profit margin at $28,441,000 or 48.04%. That is an incredible profit percent 
I'm excited as an investor to see that type of number and I really hope that's accurate. We'll get a better idea when they put out the press release, of course, but this is my best assumption based off of the press release data. Now let's take a look at the cash. But you can see here based off the last earnings, the cash and cash equivalents was $96,982,000 and they do have that Coinbase line of credit at 200 million. I do believe they've already utilized about 170 million and I'll tell you how I came up with that. I took the total posted amount, they did put this in their press release, 2,533 Bitcoin. They posted this as collateral against this Coinbase line of credit and I did some research and if you go on the SEC website, you can see they do have the loan to value ratio with Coinbase set up at 67%. So using 67% loan to value ratio and using the total amount of Bitcoin as collateral, you have to multiply by a specific Bitcoin price. Now, I think that they're probably hedging their bets a little bit because if you end up below that price, you're gonna end up getting margin call. They're gonna to have to put more Bitcoin in in order to post that as collateral. I think they're probably staying pretty cautious, maybe using 105,000 per Bitcoin as a buffer there. So with that, I think they're probably drawn down about $170,217,000. Of course, that's my best estimate here. Love to hear your thoughts. If you think that's a little too high or too low, put it in the comments and then I'll try to interact with you a little bit and hopefully we get some updates in this next earnings statement. Now, taking a look at the cash flow. Again, cost without depreciation. Again, we're at 148,949,000. That would be for the last three months plus the month of July. Now, once they put out the earnings statement, we'll be able to get a new cash and cash equivalent and we'll be able to start all of these cash flow statements over with the latest and greatest. But for now, I went ahead and stacked the July month on top of the last quarter. And you can see the total commitments. Again, this is from the last earnings statement at 159,553,000. And then looking at the total amount of revenue they've generated by selling Bitcoin, they've already generated 158,176,000 by selling Bitcoin in the months of April, May, June, and so far in July. And I think that they would have a cash balance of negative 53,343,000 if they didn't utilize that Coinbase line of credit. We know they are. They already put it in the press release that they've already posted collateral. Therefore, if they utilize all 200 million of that Coinbase line of credit, they would have total cash sitting at $146,656,000. Again, I think they're around 170 million so far they've used. So that puts them probably around $116 million of cash and cash equivalents. That is a pretty healthy amount of cash to have. And I can't wait to see what they put in the earnings statement. But again, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. All right, and as I mentioned, I wanted to point out on X, I have been tracking both CleanSpark and Mara this month here in July. And pretty exciting, CleanSpark had pull ahead of Mara. I've been using the meme pool website in order to track the Mara pool, and I've been using the public wallet address for CleanSpark. But you can see here, last time I updated this was July 23rd. Mara had just 18.75 Bitcoin mined for that specific day. CleanSpark at 21.39. You can see month to date, I have CleanSpark at 516.47 with an average at 22.46. That's what I've shared already in the previous slide. Mara is only at 488.98 with an average of 21.26. So again, we could see CleanSpark overtaking Mara as the top daily Bitcoin miner. Would love to see that this month in July. And then of course we do have Iron as well that has 50 exahash disclosed. So we'll have to see if they are gonna be up to the challenge and if they are also in the running. I don't have their public wallet address. If you have that, would love to add them in on this specific daily and then monthly check-in on the wallet addresses and the mining numbers. So what do you think? Do you think CleanSpark is going to overtake Mara and finish the month of July off strong? Maybe hit that 700 Bitcoin for the month. Love to get your thoughts on that as well. All right, and that about wraps it up for me. I hope you enjoyed this update on CleanSpark's monthly mining numbers so far. We talked about profit margins, cash flow, and then I showed you CleanSpark versus Mara so far in the month of July. Hope you really enjoyed the video. If you did, consider giving the video a like. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts about CleanSpark and Mara. What do you think is gonna happen this month of July? Will they hit 700 Bitcoin? Will CleanSpark overtake Mara? Love to get that feedback from you all. 
And with all that said, hope you all have a great rest of your day. Keep calm, hash on, and I'll see you on the next one.